Hey, I'm Denise Fishburne, also known as Fish, and we're going to talk about multicast today. So what we got here is we have a router here, a router here, a router here. This is getting kind of obvious, isn't it? One here, 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 and here. And what we have is we have a source. I'm going to call the source the transmitter. So we're going to have a source over here, and it's going to be the source of the multicast traffic. And what you want to have is you actually want to be able to have your receiver over here actually pull down that multicast traffic. Now I am saying pull, not push. We're not going to talk about multicast dense mode today. What we're going to talk about is multicast sparse mode. The joke is friends don't let friends do dense mode. Okay. So sparse mode is actually where the multicast traffic actually has to get pulled down. Dense mode was the, back in the days where the multicast source would just come online and then it would just go out and out and out and just flood everywhere, eating up all your bandwidth. So sparse mode is actually going to be a pull mentality. So that means we have to have this pull. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is when you're troubleshooting multicast, this right here is the pull. It's the trigger. It is some receiver actually saying, I would like a specific multicast address, like on a VLC, where you say, I want to see 239.1.1.1. So that is a pull. That will be sent via an IGMP IGM message. We'll get to that. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to talk about how we actually get here. Now, a lot of people actually say that multicast works backwards. But I will also say that I think unicast works backwards also, but we just don't think about it, right? Because what happens if I want to do a ping from here to this IP address over here? Well, if we're using a routing protocol, the routing protocol will actually advertise this subnet from here to over here and then from here to over here, and from here to over here. Building the kind of sort of the piping to allow me to then ping from here this way. But we still had to have something built backwards in a routing protocol to actually let us get to that direction. It's the same thing with multicast. So what's going to happen is that's going to be protocol independent multicast or PIM. So you have to have PIM neighbors. Now, PIM is not anything magical. PIM is going to be writing on top of your IGMP. I'm oh, sorry, your, your IGP. So we're going to have a PIM neighbor here, a PIM neighbor here, a PIM neighbor here. And what PIM is in charge of is PIM is actually in charge of putting those pipe blocks together of the PIM neighbor joins and sending PIM star comma Gs and PIM S comma Gs so that your multicast traffic goes from here over to there. Okay. Now, PIM is actually on the interface, you'll actually do IP PIM sparse mode. Even if you're doing, so there's two kinds of multicast when you say sparse mode. There's actually any source multicast and there's source specific multicast. Any source multicast means you don't know who the source is. It's kind of like dating. Anyway, with any source multicast, you need a dating service. You need the rendezvous point so that the girls and the boys can meet up if you're that 90%. Sorry, I just had to go there. So anyway, so the rendezvous point there is, is the dating service. That's when you don't know who your source is. Source-specific multicast is more like being married. When this receiver actually says, I want to actually pull down this multicast traffic, they will actually have the IP address of the source as well as the group. So that's source specific. Since you know exactly where you're going to go for the source, you don't need somebody to actually help you get there because you already know the IP address. So let's talk about this. So there's the pull. So let's actually see what happens. So what happens is if you're doing a show IP M route or some kind of thing looking at the multicast rib, I don't care what platform you're on. This is not Cisco specific. Okay, this is anything. So you're going to do a show command looking at your multicast routing information base. The first thing you need to do is you need to see the trigger or the pull. I want you to think of a person actually pulling on a rope. This says pull the multicast traffic down. If that does not happen, your multicast will not work. So if you actually go here and you look at the multicast routing information base and you don't see on the outgoing interface list this, this, uh, this interface, 
that's where you have to start. Okay? So assuming that somebody comes in with what is known as an IGMP membership report, that is IPv4, or an MLD, this is IPv6. Multicast is really the same for IPv4 and IPv6. It's always the same stuff. It's always who's the root, where's the root, what is the PIM RPF neighbor for the root. Those are the three things that you're always going to be doing as soon as you have the pool. So then you come here, you get the pool, and then it comes in and it says, I want to see 239.1.1.1. This is actually known as the last hop router or the LHR. The reason why it's known as the LHR, it is the last router before the receiver that sees the multicast. Pretty simple, right? This, of course, makes this the FHR. This is the first router that sees the multicast. Pretty simple. So it comes in and it says, I would like to actually have traffic. I would like to have multicast traffic for 239.1.1.1, but I don't care who the source is. So that's going to be what's called the star comma G tree. The star comma G tree is between the rendezvous point and the receiver. So this router right here is going to say, well, who is the root of this? The root of the star comma G is the rendezvous point. So that means that this router right here has to be configured to know who the rendezvous point is. When it knows who the rendezvous point is, it will then look to see, do I send it this way or do I send it this way? So it sends it this way and sends a PIM star comma G join. And then this one also needs to know who the rendezvous point is. Every router along the way has to know who the rendezvous point is because it's who is the root, where is the root, and what is the PIM reverse path forwarding neighbor to that root. And that's who you send the PIM star comma G to. So then he asks the same questions. Who's the root for 239.1.1.1? Where's the root? Okay, it's over this way. What is the PIM RPF neighbor for that? And then he builds this, a PIM star comma G join. And then here at the rendezvous point, again, regardless of what vendor, what platform you're at, this is the rendezvous point. So this right here, the shared tree. One quick second. There we go. The shared tree, the RP tree, is between the rendezvous point and down here. And now we have that built. So now we know that there is somebody out this interface that wants that multicast. Then the source comes online. When the source comes online, it's just going to start talking. No membership, just talking. And so it's going to go ahead and come in. And he still needs to know who is the rendezvous point for that group. Where is it and what is the PIM RPF neighbor? If it knows all that, it will actually send, and this is the strange thing, but it should be magic that you shouldn't have to worry about. It actually sends a unicast register join to the direct IP address of the rendezvous point because all multicast distribution trees, no matter what vendor, it's the RFC, always build their multicast distribution trees backwards. So now we're going to actually build not the star comma G, but we're going to build the S comma G. And so we're going to send a unicast to the rendezvous point, and then the rendezvous point's going to say, who is the root of the S comma G? And that's the source down here. Where is it? That's looking in the routing table. And what is the PIM RPF neighbor? Once it has those answers, it will then send either this way or this way a PIM S comma G join. And then when he gets it again, who is the who is the root? Well, it's the source of the traffic. Where is it? What is the PIM RPF neighbor? And then he'll send it. And then he'll go ahead and add to the outgoing interface list the traffic. And then we have the piping that I'm talking about all set up. We have the piping from here to here, and then from here to here, and here to here, and here to here. And now the multicast can go through. Now, one more additional thing before we end. There is a frequently forgotten fact. The frequently forgotten fact is now that this router actually sees what the source of the tree of the, the IP address is, so this source, let's say it's 10.1.1.1, it will actually try to cut over to a more efficient path 
Think about somebody in New Jersey and somebody else in New Jersey meeting each other through the dating service that's in New York. Once they actually learn about each other, it would be kind of sort of cool if they're one block away from each other that they just meet locally. So he will actually try to cut over to the shortest path tree, which might actually be a physical connection between here. And then he will prune himself off a tree mentality. He will prune himself off and then actually send an S comma G join that way. So once he actually knows and gets the traffic going down there, how does he know who the source is? Because it sees the traffic. And it came from 10.1.1.1. So again, remember, you got to have the trigger, you got to have the pull if you don't have that. Who's the root? Where's the root? What's the PIM RPF neighbor for the root? And that's your multicast troubleshooting. Thank you.